Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about something that I, I kind of like, it's pretty cool. And it's to do with TCP IP sockets and handling multiple socket connections concurrently. So this is this is quite an advanced discussion so let's uh, let's let's get started. So in TCP IP sockets that's the API which is available to us on the ESP32 to perform TCP IP based programming. Now sockets has been around forever and ever it's been around since early Unix days in the 70s and is pretty much the de facto C language API for uh, basically doing TCP IP programming. If you haven't learned to program in sockets and you plan to do ESP32 network programming, you're really you're really behind the curve there. You want to learn sockets. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to teach sockets, but I'm going to teach a, a technique that's related to sockets that is specific to the ESP32. So in this program that we're going to be looking at here, I am setting my ESP32 up as what's called a socket server. Now a socket server is an application which listens for incoming client connections. When a client connection arrives, we do something with that connection, send and receive data with the client, and then we disconnect the client and then we go onwards. So let's have a look at the program. So we've got, a, we've got a, a task here in ESP32 and then the first API call we make is called socket and what that does is that creates us an empty unused socket which will be used by the ESP32 to listen for incoming connections. Then we bind that socket to the TCP IP port number here TCP IP port number, which I've defined to be 8001, we bind that socket to the local port number on the ESP32. So what that will mean is that the application will now start, will be bound to that port number, and then we perform a listen API call. Now these three, socket, bind, listen, socket, bind, listen. Those are very, very common. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are very, very common in the sockets programming environment. We create a socket, we bind it to the TCP IP port we're going to listen on, 8001, and then we call this listen API, which says now actually start listening and listen for a maximum of five concurrent connections where we haven't received those connections yet. We'll come back to that in a minute. Bottom line, create a socket, bind it to the port number and listen. Now we put ourselves into a while loop and we call the last TCP IP socket API I'm interested in called accept. So we've got four APIs here, socket, bind, listen and accept. Now what that does for us is the accept API call is a blocking API call. So when we reach this step in the, in the program, the program will stop, it will block, it will listen on this particular socket and it will wait there for an incoming TCP IP client request. Now when a client request arrives, when a network connection is requested from outside the ESP32, the accept call will unblock we'll be given a brand new socket and this will be the socket connection to the newly created client. We then call this function called send data and what send data does is it takes as input the new client socket and loops around 10 times printing out a message and then waiting a second. So this, this function here will take 10 seconds to run. It will print a message, wait for a second, print another message, wait for another second, and then at the end it will close the socket and we're done. So when we call send data here, we're going to wait for 10 seconds. And then once we've sent the data through the socket to the client, we go back and we listen for the next incoming client. Okay, so let's follow this through. We create a socket, we bind it to the TCP IP port we're going to listen on, we say we're going to start listening, and now we block here waiting for the incoming client requests. When our client request arrives, we send messages to it. So I've already flashed my ESP32 with this program. 
and uh, it's listening on its TCP IP address and here I am on a, on a Linux uh, uh, shell here and we're going to use the Network Connect program NC and we're going to connect to my ESP32 on port number 8001. I hit the enter key and we get a message one a second because we connected to the ESP32. The ESP32 received our connection request at accept and then called the send data call uh, issues a message once every second. Okay, so if I run that again, every time we run it, we get a new connection and uh, we wake up at this accept call and we process the data and now we're off and running. So, now watch what happens if I try and run two simultaneously. So I hit the enter key here, we're getting messages, and now I hit the enter key here again, and we get nothing in that second connection. Now watch what happens when the first one completes. When the first one completes, then the second one starts. So what's going on here? The answer is this accept call. When we reach this logic in our application program, we call accept to receive the next incoming connection request. We accept the new connection request and then we send data for 10 seconds. And once we sent the data for 10 seconds, then and only then do we go back and accept the next connection request. So effectively what we're doing here is we are serializing incoming connection requests. And what that means is we don't do any kind of parallel processing. We're starving one network client while servicing the first one. Well, that's okay. I mean, that, that, that might work at a pinch. That might be all you need. If you're only ever accepting one incoming network client, then this will work just perfectly. However, if we want to accept multiple clients simultaneously, we appear to have a problem. Because once we perform the accept, we're blocking here, and then we process the data, and then only once we process the data do we go back to blocking. So, let me show you another version of this program. It looks the same, very much the same. I'm going to change my, uh, code, uh, my, my code here so that it compiles and comment out the other one. Comment out the other one. I'm going to run the same program, but I'm going to change it. There we go. So in this program, in this version, our loop up to here, our code up to here is the same. We do the socket, we do the bind, we do the listen. Now we do the accept. But here we're using one of the three RTOS APIs, the real-time operating system built into the ESP32. And we're using an API that's supplied by the ESP32 environment called task create. Now what task create does is it creates a new task in some programming environments they're called threads but here in the ESP32 they're called tasks. It creates a new task and that task then runs in parallel after this code is created. So we accept a socket we're blocking here when we wake up from that socket we create a task and then immediately go and start listening for another incoming connection request. So what does the task do? Here's our code for our task. The task here starts, it gets past some input data. That input data is the socket client. And then in the task, we call our loop to send the message 10 times. Now, because this task is now running in parallel or asynchronously to the main task, it will not block the main task. And it'll just keep on running until it's completed. Now, in this example, um, the task API takes a number of parameters. The first parameter is a pointer to the function, which is the task that's going to be created. Then we have an optional name for the task. Then we have the stack size for the task. And then this is the parameter I want to draw as att our attention to. It's a pointer to an area of storage. Now, in, a, in this case, we're cheating a little bit. We're passing in this integer value and we're coercing it to be a pointer value. And uh, we're then decoding that again uh, from the pointer that value back to the socket. But if we wanted to pass in multiple parameters, we would do something like mallocking a area of storage populating that area of storage and then passing in the pointer to that area of storage in the task create.
So the, the key thing to realize here is that when we make the accept call, it blocks and then we uh, create a task when an incoming client uh, uh, arrives. That task will now run in parallel. We immediately return from task create and then we go back to blocking waiting for another incoming connection. Now if another client connects that's fine. We'll just go go ahead and keep creating tasks in parallel uh, and each one of those tasks will serve as the incoming client connection. Alright, with those words behind us let's uh, rebuild my application but this time with the uh, task code in it so it's recompiling it's running it's starting up nearly there nearly there and this time it's using this task based logic and we're connecting we're connecting we're connecting we're still connecting bear with me still connecting and we're connected so now if I run my client exactly the same as before doesn't appear to do anything different I'm connecting we're getting messages back I'll let that one finish now let's run it again and in this other window let's run a second version and now look what's happening we're getting two clients being serviced simultaneously because what's happened in our code logic is that we have the ability we have created a parallel task in order to handle that logic. So the high level of this tutorial or this discussion has been the pairing together of TCP IP sockets API and the ESP32 task creation mechanism. So when we create a task we're creating code that runs in parallel to our code here. When we block on the task we can create a, another ta when we block on the accept when we wake up we can create a task that task doesn't need to complete before we go back and wait for an acceptance of the next connection. The previously created task will run in parallel and uh, that will do our work and then the task comes to an end and we're done. So this has been one of the more uh, technical tutorials. I hope you found some use in it. If you've got any questions, please let's uh, post to the forum and uh, we'll try and address those. I hope you found something useful in this tutorial and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks guys and bye-bye.